Oh, well, you get this, don't you? Look, there I am hiding under the truck trying to do some real work. And my mate Bluey Boyle's come past. And I know why he's come past, because he's probably heard there's a carton in the fridge. But um, this is good timing, because, as you know, I've been using Lanotech forever. Well, this is the guy who owns the company, literally. And um, when he's not bashing up people in tent boxing, things, you don't do that anymore, <laughs> do you? No. No, he's an old bushy from way back. Probably that's where the Lanatech connection comes in, but uh, I figured why not take advantage of this? You can get it from the sheep's mouth himself. No offence there, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but look, you know, there's stuff here that I've been using forever, and then there's some new stuff too. This Citra Force Blue, I've been using that today to clean parts. Um, I love it because I can stick my hands right in there. I can wash it out on the grass. It's just not a drama, is it? Is it all natural? Everything here is natural. Um, one from a sheep and one from an orange, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> I was watching a clip the other day, because I was a driller for a while, and, and the blokes were uh, using Lanatech for the ends of the drill pipes to protect it, well, keep that, it all uh, lubricated. Exactly, and that's, uh, that's going to be a huge market for us. And, and one of the biggest problems with the oil and gas industry is all this testing the inspections. Yeah. So the removal of the greases, the current comp uh, grease compounds, inspecting it, reapplying. Yeah. With what I set out to prove over there with our product, simply spray it on. After a period of four or five months when it comes up to inspection, you simply undo the cap, visually look at it and do it back up. Yeah. It's a time saving, cost saving yeah. and an environmental saving. Read between the lines, folks. 20 years ago, I started telling everyone how good Lanatech was and all I heard was, I can't get hold of any. Then I get on to Bluey and I say, what's going on? And he said, well, I can't help it, mate. The, um, what was going on? It was at Afghan. There was some big crisis going on in the world and all of a sudden the Navy wanted it all for their landing craft. And then it was something else. There was always something on the go that was keeping Lanatech out of the shops. So you make, where can you get it now? Well, most of our industrial supplies throughout Australia, your Blackwoods and your Mitre Tans and um, a lot of your hardware stores. Yeah. Uh, Repco, Super Cheaps, companies like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you're lucky. Yeah, well, yeah. you can go to our website. Get it and find together, mate. Dealer. Get it together. <laughs> Stick around Australia for a while. Um, look at this. That's one of the original tubs, isn't Correct. it? Correct. Yeah. 18 years old. 18 years old. Now, we found this up the back of the shed, my shed. Look at that. It's still in perfect condition. That's amazing, isn't it, for any product yeah. to have a shelf life of 18 years. Actually, not 18 years, probably more like 100 years. Probably would be because in the old days, or well, going back 18 years ago, 15, 18 years ago, I bought, actually bought wool grease off the Defence Force. Oh, did you? Yeah. Well, you bought it off them. Yep. With surplus stock and... Um, in them days, they used to call it tropic because they used to protect their um, weaponry up in New Guinea in the Second World War. Right, eh? But the biggest problem was getting rid of it, getting it off the old 3 hours <laughs> yeah. so, Which is exactly wish... the problem you want if you're going to lube up the bottom of your four-wheel drive, which I'm going to be doing pretty soon anyway because we're getting the truck ready for another trip. And uh, so my choice there, I always used to use the heavy duty, then you came out with the UP. That's correct. And I've been using this stuff. What's the difference between these two products? Well, they're all, uh, all uh, made from wool grease, lanolin, but UP is an, a derivative of lanolin. And uh, it leaves a drier film, so we sort of promote that mainly just for rust protection. Yeah. Whereas the heavy duty is rust protection, lubrication as well. So yeah. it's more versatile. We've done a lot more testing with this. But UP, ultimate protection, is mainly for corrosion only, corrosion storage only. and so on. Okay. All right, so see, in a way, I was kind of right, because using the heavy duty, I also soak the springs in it, and it makes the leaf springs work really well. And as usual, just yarn with Bluey, he tells me today that I should be greasing the shackles with uh, type A grease. Well, that's the thing, it's the water repellency, it never dries out, so then no. it doesn't allow moisture or corrosion, so that's the big thing. And it's versatile, it's inert, it's safe on rubbers, yeah. um, non-perishing, 
terminals and so on like that. Yes, it's really good for any kind of electrical purpose. It's starting to sound like a commercial. It's supposed to be an infomercial, mate. <laughs> but I believe in it. I really do. The interesting thing you told me last time we had a beer. Um, or two. Or two, it was. <laughs> if you spray this, I've heard of people spraying uh, lanolin on rubber, and it's perfectly safe. Lanolin is perfectly safe on rubber. But if you use a spray pack, it's got a propellant in it. Is that That's right? That's correct, yeah. Explain that to me again. Well... Because <coughs> it was three beers and I didn't quite get it. <laughs> to liquefy the grease, we use a, a solvent. But the solvent is a, is a paraffin, a vapidity paraffin, which is probably the most environmentally friendly of all the petroleum hydrocarbons. So that's simply there for dispersing. It, it evaporates away and leaves behind a fine film of lanolin. Right. And this is our lightest grade. This is probably my favourite general purpose. Uh, you know, I've sprayed on that wall there and come back in 20 years time, it's still going to be there. Yes. But for the really harsh environment, we go to more to our marine grade. So most applications, that's enough. Yeah. Now, look, I know it works. Um, I've, it's all I ever recommend for underbody stuff on four wheel drives. You know why. Um, you've seen what I've done with Milo over the years. It's kind of hard when you've been in a sinkhole on a west coast beach in Tasmania in the salt uh, to pull it out and wash it down the next day. So you don't. You just rely on the soaking. You gave it with lanolin a week or two before. Um, I've driven round after I've been driving through the sea for three or four weeks before I got a chance to find a fire hose. And at the end of the day, the old girl's fallen to bits, but it's fallen to bits through metal fatigue, not through rust, which is pretty amazing. Yeah. So I'd kind of like to say thank you, but I'm not because you didn't bring any beer. You'll have to have one of mine. Come on, <laughs> jeez. I knew you'd offer. <laughs>